Hi, my name's Peter Coffin, and Skibbity Toilet is somehow still a thing. Why is that? You see, back in February of 2023, Alexei Gerasimov, apologies if that is not the correct pronunciation of your name, sir, uploaded Skibbity Toilet to his YouTube channel, and it was an instant hit. <laughs> He's got plenty of animation on there, so he had been trying for a while. And yes, the animation is very much like Skibbity Toilet. <laughs> He had been honing that animation style for years. But our man Alexei came up with a real hit by using a remixed version of Skibbity by Russian pop band Little Big and having a guy pop out of a toilet. <laughs> As of this recording, there are 78 episodes. Episodes of the series Skibbity Toilet, which is serialized content. Now, I'm a parent and... The way I first heard of Skibbity Toilet was my kids. They are both in elementary school, and that is exactly who Skibbity Toilet is popular with. But as I've read what adults think about Skibbity Toilet, I think that there is something being missed by anybody who tries to analyze this situation. Obviously, internet trends are flashbang. They can be there and gone. Uh, somehow, this has lasted over a year now. An article from Business Insider asserts there's a kind of nostalgia for the old internet, but I would assert that elementary school age children don't remember the old internet. There's also a lot ado about nostalgia for the Source engine and the era of gaming in which it came to become popular. Uh, a lot of Half-Life assets in Skibbity Toilet, but that doesn't explain the fact that like 99% of the people that watch Skibbity Toilet are five to ten years old. So in my opinion, these like Business Insider and Guardian articles aren't really explaining the phenomenon of Skibbity Toilet and are kind of trying to graft on adult reasoning to it. And, and I think that that's just the wrong approach. So Skibbity Toilet is a kind of violent, kind of weird, random seeming cartoon where a lot of crazy crap goes down over very short periods of time. It's Ren and Stimpy. You stupid idiot! I mean, it's it's not literally Ren and Stimpy, but if you start thinking about, like, is there something from my childhood that's kind of violent, random, crazy crap is going down over a very short period of time, it's Ren and Stimpy. Or maybe Freakazoid, or if you want to get a little dark, Invader Zim. Skibbity Toilet, in my opinion, is occupying that space. Amongst responsible parents, there was a lot of the same concern that people have over Skibbity Toilet today over Ren and Simpy back then. If I correctly remember how my mom acted over Ren and Simpy, um, people are acting real similar about Skibbity Toilet. What the hell is this thing? It's all, it's, it's so violent and weird. I'm Peter's mom, and I hate fun. Also, I don't know why I have this accent. <laughs> So a couple of things. Obviously, to some extent, uh, Ren and Simpy represents a kind of child counterculture. The parents don't like it. The kids want to see it, right? And it's just on that border of, uh, it's not actually really that inappropriate. At least the stuff that was on Nickelodeon. The adult party cartoon and later stuff, probably not a good idea for kids to watch. But the uh, Nickelodeon era, Ren and Stimpy... It was subversive in a way, like you weren't supposed to watch it, but you kind of also knew like watching this doesn't do anything to me, does it? Well, no, it doesn't make me more violent or more bad or anything, but maybe it it does have some influence. We'll talk about that in a few minutes. But one of the big things Ren and Stimpy and uh, the Nicktoons and the WB and Adult Swim later on did was create a kind of cultural hub, a shared touchstone that kids kind of congregated around. I'm sure Looney Tunes did it in previous eras and maybe even Jerry Lewis at some point. I don't know. Did kids like him? They liked Freakazoid and Freakazoid was basically if Jerry Lewis was a superhero, um, but also Freakazoid did not look anything like Jerry Lewis. Jerry Lewis was in black and white. Ugh, black and white. Also, I hate VHS tapes. I'm not nostalgic for that shit at all. It fucking sucked. Rewinding and terrible picture quality that degrades further over time. Fuck that. But anyway, it was kind of water cooler content for kids of that age, like between five and ten. You'd go into school and be like, did you see Ren and Stimpy this weekend? It was so funny how they zoomed really far in on the gross thing. 
In a lot of ways, those cartoons provided a bit of a rebellion from authority and norms, which were very uh, weirdly uptight considering how free and open the 90s was supposed to be. I had an upbringing that by today's standards would be considered very sheltered, but I don't think it was really that sheltered by the standards of them. I mean, I wasn't supposed to watch Ren and Stimpy, but I did watch Ren and Stimpy. <laughs> And these sorts of things sort of created a personal connection and sense of community around people. And maybe community based entirely around consumption isn't necessarily the best thing, but it was a thing. I don't want to get too nostalgic for that, though, because I do want to talk about the fact that this stuff was kind of controlled subversiveness. These things were put on to TV networks by large capital owners. At the time, Nickelodeon's parent company was called Viacom. It's called Paramount now. It's a huge sized company. The WB was owned by Warner Brothers, of course, uh, and Adult Swim, I think, was also just Viacom. The point is, this stuff got right past the gatekeepers. Like, it's not that subversive. In fact, one might even say that in terms of ideology, that stuff maybe was intentionally pretty nihilistic, because look at how things are today. Imagine if the nihilistic cartoons of the 1990s were more optimistic and more about, like, how good things could be. Imagine how much more disappointed we would be with how things are now. <laughs> yeah, the prevailing ideology of a society is the ideology of the rulers, and the rulers in capitalism are the people that own, and therefore, Ren and Stimpy and all that stuff, it's ruling ideology. And I, like I said, think it's a bit nihilistic. And this is where I think uh, there is a marked difference between uh, what Ren and Stimpy is and what Skibbity Toilet is. Skibbity Toilet is just some guy in Russia that like the Russian government has had to investigate because parents in Russia are reporting it as scary and subversive in this exact same way that anybody in the West has a moral panic over it. It's just some guy doing a weird thing and it's hitting still after a year. While the nihilism of cartoons when I was a kid has maybe influenced people of my generation to have a more negative outlook, Skibbity Toilet is not nihilistic. In fact, if you take it seriously in terms of what is actually happening in it, which is difficult to do, it is basically about the futility of war. It's an endless arms race between two sides, and no side seems to be getting any better, like lives don't seem to be getting any better. It actually reminds me of this other random Russian cartoon that my kids also liked, which was just these tanks endlessly fighting and escalating and participating in an arms race where the tank got bigger and better. And it just continued to get more and more insane and nobody ever got anywhere. It never got better. Like the tanks were locked in this endless war forever. I wouldn't necessarily call it optimism, but I would call it kind of de facto criticism of how the world is now, which is maybe at its core, even if not necessarily entirely intentionally, maybe a little bit better than the nihilism. I don't want to say Skibbity Toilet was better than Ren and Stimpy, because uh, I, I, that seems like a weird thing to say. But I also don't want to say Ren and Stimpy is better than Skibbity Toilet, because who the fuck am I? My generation shit is not better than another generation shit. It all serves a purpose somewhere. And I think that's why Skibbity Toilet is ultimately still popular. It's still going. First off, this guy hit something that he absolutely had no idea he was going to hit. And second off, rather than running away from it, like a lot of people would do, he leaned straight into it. To be frank, that kind of success would be scary to anyone, to me. And our man was just like, you know what? Let's go. And I do think that this portrayal of the futility of war is something that everybody is kind of going to be grappling with for as long as that continues. We certainly live in an era with a lot of stupid wars going on. Like the West is really trying to maintain global dominance through its, its NATO proxies. First off, man, we like oil. And second off, man, we like dominance. But everybody thought there was going to be no more war until 9-11, and then slowly over the next 20 years realized that there was wars going on the whole time, and that our country is the instigating country. I don't know. Kids still see what their parents are talking about and interested in, and I don't know if you ever looked at Twitter, but us millennials are, like, 
unhealthily obsessed with politics. It's fandom. And and to the point where, like, there is a Ukraine fandom. There is an Israel fandom. And there's no way our kids aren't picking up on that at all. And whether they realize it or not, this kind of media embodies that. Again, I, I'm not going to tell you that I think that it's necessarily intentional. I'm not going to tell you that it's really well done or well crafted social commentary secretly implanted into this seemingly random children's nonsense. But people are influenced by the things going on around them. And technically, the entire world now is 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 kind of going on around us in a very weirdly small space. So Skibbity Toilet is big because I think our kids don't really have a cultural touchstone. And also it kind of taps into a lot of stuff that maybe it doesn't even realize it's doing. Getting mad about Skibbity Toilet is weird. I, I see people mad about it a lot, actually. First off, there's people who complain about it on social media. Second off, there's articles about parents and moral panic and shit. And it doesn't make any sense to me. Who gives a shit? If it's anything like Ren and Stimpy, if you're going to tell your kids that they can't watch it, uh, they're going to watch it. Probably better to just have conversations with them about it. That's what I do. Like, I ask my kids their opinion on this stuff, and they tell me about it. And I don't necessarily agree with everything they're saying, but they're also kids. They're developing. They're figuring stuff out. I give them a little input, and I let them think. I think that's all I got for you. Uh, lick those buttons underneath me. Give them a nice big old slurp. Become a subscriber. Uh, money me at patreon.com slash Peter Coffin. Join the Discord. Like, we have a great Discord. It's it's really, like, go into the description and click the Discord link if you do Discord at all. Our Discord rules. Anyway, I hope you have a good day. Thanks for watching. Bye.